Hello, we are Heda Gabler, and my name is Alejandra Melendez Soto. Today we'll be talking about Hendrik Ibsen. He was born on March 20th, 1828, in a well to do merchant family in a small part town of Schien. He was a major playwright, poet, and theater director of the 19th century. He is the most frequently performed dramatist in the world after Shakespeare. A Doll's House was the world's most performed play by the early 20th century. The, his first published play was Tra Tragedy Catiline under Fasanium Branoff Farm. His first stage play was The Burial Mound in 1850. He was referred to as the father of realism and the founder of modernism and theater. Hello, my name is Alexander Bailey, and I'll be talking about Henrik Johann Ibsen. Ibsen explores psychological conflicts that tr transcended a simple rejection of current conventions. Ibsen had completely rewritten the rules of drama with realism, which was which was adapted by Chekhov and others, and which we see in theater to this day. In 1875, Ibsen moved to Munich and published his next play, A Doll's House, in 1879. In some of the earliest notes of A Doll's House, he writes, I quote, There are two kinds of spiritual laws and two kinds of consequences. Consciences. One for men and one for women. They do not understand each other, but in the practical matters of life, women are judged by man's law as if they were not women, but men. And lastly, these themes trickle over his other influential play that we will be producing, Hedda Gattler. Hi, my name is Nathaniel Montes, and I will be speaking a little bit about theatrical realism. So theatrical realism aims to bring a greater fidelity to real life texts and performances, and it focuses on everyday middle class dramas, such as ordinary speech and ordinary settings. 19th century realism is closely connected to the development of modern drama. So Ibsen's uh, realistic drama had been uh, enormously uh, influential. Uh, it was a slice-of-life drama, which is the illusion of real life created on stage. Typically, uh, it is a domestic family setting set in one room or connected uh, rooms into the house. Now, the proscenium stage creates this fourth wall, which is the concept that uh, you are looking through uh, the fourth or imaginary wall of the room. Please enjoy our interpretation of Hedda Gabler. Good morning, George. Dear Aunt Julia, do come in. Well, just for a moment. I had to come and see how you were getting on. You got all right home. You got home all right from the pier? Oh, yes. Why, what a gorgeous bonnet. Aunt Julia, here, let me take it. I'll put it right here on the chair. Oh, there's Hedda now. Good morning, my dear. Welcome home. Thank you, Miss Tessman. Well, has the bride slept well in her new home? Oh, yes. George, we shall never get on with this new servant of ours. Berta, why not? Why, look, she's left her old bonnet on the sofa there. What, Hedda? That's Aunt Julia's bonnet. Yes, what, what more? It's not old, Hedda. I really didn't look that closely at it, Miss Tessman. And what a very nice bonnet it is, Aunt Julia. I must go, George. Well, goodbye, Hedda. Goodbye, George. These flowers weren't here when we arrived last night. Weren't they? Oh, here's a visiting card. Shall return later, Miss Elvsted. Really? Yes, the irritating girl with the bad hair. An old flame of yours, I've been told. It's odd she would call on us. I scarcely remember seeing her since we left school. I wonder... Oh, that may be Miss Elvsted now. Good morning. Miss Elvsted, we were just speaking of you. Do sit down. Thank you. I must tell you, if you don't already know, Eilert Loveborg is in town. Loveborg? What? Has Mr. Loveborg come back? He has been here a whole week already. Just fancy, a whole week in this terrible town, alone, with so many temptations on all sides. Was Eilert regular enough in his habits to be fit for the post? For the last two years, his conduct was irreproachable. but. Now he's here in town with, and with a large sum of money that he's received for his new book, I'm afraid. Afraid? Yes, and that's why I've come to implore you, Mr. Tessman, to receive Eilert Loveborg kindly. If he comes to you, he's sure to come. You were such friends in the old days, and then you're interested in the same studies, uh, in the same branch of science. Of course. Why, I'll see him now. Good. Now, if you'll excuse me. No, 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 call me Hedda, and I shall call you Thora. My name is Thea. Of course that's what I meant. So, Thea, 
You are not happy at home with your husband? I've left my husband. <clears throat> I shall never go back to him again. The reason? Eilert Loveborg? Yes. My dear Thea, how did this friendship develop between you and Eilert Loveborg? Oh, it, it grew gradually. I gained a sort of influence over him. Indeed. He gave up all his old habits. He saw how repulsive they were to me. He also lets me help him with his work. I wasn't able to locate Mr. Loveborg. I... Why, who can that be? I'll see. Why, Judge Brack, come in. Hedda will be back in just a minute. How is she? Does she like the house? Oh, yes, of course. There are a few things she wants, but when I get my appointment... My dear Tessman, I am afraid your appointment as the professor is going to be delayed longer than you expected. What? There's no hitch about it, is there? Well, the appointment may perhaps be made conditional on the result of a competition. Who can my competitor be? Eilert Loveborg. But that's impossible. I married head on the strength of my prospects of getting the appointment. I've run deep into debt. I've borrowed money from Aunt Julia, too. Well, no doubt you'll get the appointment in the end, after a contest. But I must be on my way, Tesman. I'll drop in this afternoon and take you home with me. You haven't forgotten you're coming to my little supper party tonight, have you? No, of course not. Remember to give my regards to Hedda. Goodbye. Goodbye. Who rang the bell, George? Judge Brock. Oh, Hedda. The judge says there might be some difficulty about my appointment for the professorship. Oh. Eilert Loveborg is competing for it, too. Really? How terrible if I shouldn't get it. We must start economizing. So, you are here again, Judge. As you see, Miss Tessman. Now I'll shoot you. No, no, no! Look out! Uh, are you out of your senses? <laughs> I wish you'd let these pranks alone. Come on, Judge. Haven't you tired of this sport yet? Oh, I only fired it in the air. Let me take that pistol. There. Now, we won't play that game anymore today. What would you have me do with myself? Isn't Tesman home? No. He rushed off to his aunt's directly after lunch. He didn't expect you so early. Hmm. If I had known that, I would have come a little earlier. Not a day has passed that I'd wish that you were home again. And I have done nothing but wish the same. What I found most intolerable was being in the everlasting company of one. Fortunately, your wedding journey is over now. Hello, Hedda. I've, bought, I've brought Eilert Loveborg with me. Come along, Judge. We'll drink together. Very well. There. Now they're gone. Hedda Gabler. Hedda Gabler. That was my name in the old days, when we two knew each other. Hedda Gabler married? Yes, so the world goes on. <sighs> was there no love in our friendship? I wonder if there was. <sighs> Should we have, at any rate, have continued? The fault was yours. It was you that broke up with me. Yes, it's when our friendship de threatened to develop into something serious. Oh, Hedda, you are a coward at heart. I know that Thea has confined in you. And perhaps you have confined to her something about us? Well? I dare not shoot you down, Eilert. People think you feel quite confident in yourself. People may suspect what they like. I saw it plainly in Judge Brack's face a moment ago when you dared not accept his invitation. Do you say I dared not? That's how Judge Brack understood it. Well, let him think what he wants. Well, Mrs. Tesman, it's time your husband and I were on our way. I suppose it is, Judge. Uh, a little while ago you were kind enough to invite me to your little supper party. Oh, will you come after all? Yes, thanks. <laughs> Miss Elstead, I'll come for about 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Well, now, we really must go, gentlemen. Goodbye, Ahedda. Good morning. Hedda, good heavens, why are you up so early? 
Yes, I am up very early this morning. And I never doubted you were still sound asleep. Fancy that, Hedda. Don't speak so loud. Miss Elvestead is resting in my room. <clears throat> well, did you enjoy yourself at Judge Brax? Oh, yes. For once, in a way. Especially the beginning of the evening. For then Eilert read me a part of his book. Well, tell me about it. Oh, Hedda, you can't conceive what kind of a book it's going to be. Yes, and what came of it all? Well, to tell you the truth, the party developed into some type of drinking orgy. Eilert got intoxicated and made a very long, rambling speech in honor of the woman who had inspired him in his work. And now comes the worst part. Had I declare I am almost ashamed. On Eilert's account, I tell you. Oh, go on. Well, when the party broke early this morning, Judge Brack had to help Eilert home. And we had far more to drink than what was good for him. Well, I was walking a little way behind me and... What do you think I found by the wayside? How should I know? You mustn't speak a soul, Hedda. Do you hear? Promise me for Eilert's sake. Dear? I found this. Eilert's manuscript? Yes, his precious, irreplaceable manuscript. <gasps> and it's gone. He lost it. And I knew nothing about it. But why did you not give it back to him? I didn't dare to in the state he was in. Did you not tell any of the others you had found it? For Eilert's sake, I, I wouldn't do that. So no one knows you have possession of Eilert Loveborg's manuscript? No, and no one must know it. Do not give it to him. Not in such a hurry, I mean. Let me read it first. No, my dearest Hedda, I, I mustn't. I, I really mustn't. Can such a thing not be rewritten, reproduced over again? Uh, I don't think that's possible for the inspiration, you see. Oh, yes, yes. I suppose it depends on that. Well, George, just leave the manuscript with me now while you bathe and take a little rest. Aren't you tired? Yes, I, I am a little. <laughs> well, all right, Hedda. I'll catch an hour's sleep. Don't let anyone see the manuscript. Fool. <laughs> Suppose now, Hedda, that a man in the small hours of the night came home to his child's mother after a night of riot and debauchery and said, Listen, I have been here and there and this place and that, and I have taken our child with to this place and that. And I have lost our child, utterly lost it. The devil knows in what hands it may have fallen, who may have had their clutches on it. Thea's pure soul was in that book. Yes, so I understand. And you can understand too that for her and me together, there is no future possible. What path do you mean to take by this? None. I am only trying to make an end of it all. The sooner the better. Eilert, listen to me. Will you not try to do it beautifully? Beautifully? With fine leaves in my hair? As you used to dream of in the old days? No, no. I've lost my faith in the vine leaves, but beautifully nonetheless. For once in a way, goodbye. You must go now and never come back here anymore. I have nothing in today. Nothing else here. No, wait. I must give you a memento. A memento? This is the memento? Do you not recognize it? It was once aimed at you. You should have used it then. How is the work progressing on Eilert Loveborg's memorial? It's going to be terribly difficult to get it into any sort of shape or order, but we've got to. We must do it. After all, putting other people's papers into order is rather your specialty, isn't it? What were you saying about the pistols? I said he must have stolen it. And why do you think that? I saw the pistol Loveborg had when they found him. I recognized it at once, from yesterday, and other occasions. Have you got it? No. The police have it. What will the police do with this pistol? Try to trace the owner. <clears throat> do you think they'll succeed? 
No, Hedda Gabler. Not as long as I hold my tongue. And if you don't? You could always say he'd stolen it. I'd rather die. <clears throat> People say that. They never mean it. In other words, I'm in your power, Judge. From now on, you've got your hold over me. Hedda, my dearest, believe me. I will not abuse my position. Nevertheless, I'm in your power, dependent on your will, <clears throat> your demands. Not free. Still not free. No, I couldn't bear that. No. Most people resign to themselves the inevitable sooner or later. Possibly they do. It distresses her to watch us doing this. I say, Judge Brack, I have an idea. Why doesn't Miss Elvestead move in with Aunt Julia? I'll run over every evening and we can sit down and work there. Yet, yes, that might be the best plan. I can hear what you're saying, but how shall I spend the evenings out there? Oh, I'm sure Judge Brack will be kind enough to come over and keep you company. You won't mind being there, Judge. I'll be delighted, Mrs. Tesman. I'll be here every evening. We'll have great fun together, you and I. Oh, yes. That'll suit you, won't it, Judge? The only cock on the dumb hill. Oh, she, she's playing with those pistols again. She shot herself! She shot herself in the head! Good God. People don't do such things. <laughs> 